Thanks for joining us uh, at ConoCogs. We are going to take a look at a VOC concentrator, how it operates, and uh, what applications might be best for utilizing a VOC concentrator. VOC concentrator takes airstreams that have very dilute amount of VOCs in the airstream and airstreams that are ambient temperature or cooler, and uh, those are the perfect applications for a VOC concentrator. And the type of VOC is important as well. It can't be a condensable VOC. It can't be um, certain types of uh, alcohols uh, that don't absorb well onto the wheel. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but we'll, let's look at the operation of it. What we're looking at here is a touch screen from our PLC on a VOC concentrator system. And it's a schematic diagram showing the rotor wheel, which is where the VOCs are absorbed in the unit and everything uh, centers around this wheel. It rotates continuously and absorbs VOCs that are passed through it. And then there's different segments that are set aside for cooling the wheel uh, after it comes out of a, a heating section. And the heating section is called the desorption section. That's where the VOCs are driven off of the wheel or rotor and and then route it over to an oxidizer for treatment. So let's look at the flow path. We see the air coming in here from a source. Could be a paint booth, could be a gel coating operation, a fiberglass layup application, uh, or, or it could be a semiconductor um, uh, application or a paint spray booth. I think I mentioned that as well. So airflow would come in through here. Uh, it would be at ambient temperature typically and would be drawn in uh, past a set of filters that's very important because this wheel is an expensive component within the rotor or within the VOC concentrator. Important to have filters prior to it to take out any say paint particulates or any particulates that might build up on the wheel and make it ineffective. So we take the airstream and say we come in here at 50,000 SCFM, we uh, pass through the filters, uh, pass through the wheel and in the wheel or the rotor is a zeolite material on a honeycomb uh, structure. The air passes through the honeycomb structure and then out to atmosphere. Within the honeycomb, the zeolite adsorbs the VOCs that are in the airstream and clings onto them, holds onto them, and does not release them. The air passes through. So if you came in at 50,000 SEFM of air, 45,000 would go out to atmosphere cleaned would have only about 2% of the VOCs still remaining in this airstream. So 98% of the VOCs would be removed and would be captured on this wheel. This wheel continues to rotate throughout the, um, uh, continuously and those VOCs build up on the wheel and then they need to be driven off. And that's called the desorption mode, desorption section. And that's done here with hot air. You see it's 419 degrees. It passes through a segment of the wheel uh, heats that wheel up and those VOCs become activated or energized and are driven off of the zeolite. It breaks that adhesion that's happening uh, back here at ambient temp. Uh, the temperature drives it off. So the VOCs come loose and this same airstream that is heating it uh, is the airstream that carries the VOCs away. And this desorption fan is what's drawing that air through. And then you can see it either could go to atmosphere uh, but in this case, it's going to the RTO duct, the inlet of the RTO for treatment. So those VOCs that are captured in this airstream, 5,000 SCFM, have all 98% of the VOCs in them from the incoming airstream, pass through and go to the RTO for VOC destruction in the RTO. So no destruction happens here in the VOC concentrator. It just captures VOCs, adsorbs them. So we see 50,000 SCFM coming in, 5,000 SCFM going through the wheel here uh, as a cooling mode. So as it comes out of desorption mode, this wheel is hot and it can't capture VOCs properly until it gets back to ambient temperature. So this cooling section uh, cools the wheel off before it comes back into an adsorption uh, mode. So that 5,000 SCFM is driven taken off of this incoming stream. Uh, it 
capture or gathers and uh, absorbs heat from this wheel and it's heated up to about 200 some degrees before it then goes past the burner and gets heated up the rest of the way so so that's the internal workings of VLC concentrator the wheel continually turns the air continually passes through the wheel and goes to atmosphere and then slipstream continually passes through uh, for cooling and for desorption and then out to the RTO for destruction. So this can't stand alone. It won't do anything except absorb VOCs, but it won't destroy them. It needs to be paired with an oxidizer. In this case, an RTO. Other applications might uh, be served well enough with a catalytic oxidizer or a thermal oxidizer. But if you utilize one of these for said paint spray booth, you're going to save 40 to 50 percent in fuel compared to running just a standalone RTO and you will save 40 percent in electrical costs because you're only treating 5,000 SCFM through a constant through an RTO where if it was an RTO alone it'd be 50,000 going through the RTO and the RTO has a much higher pressure drop and resistance than this rotor wheel does so that's the background on it. We'll take a little bit uh, of time to look at now a physical layout of the VOC concentrator so you can see what it might look like from the outside. And hopefully that'll give you enough information to grasp what these look like, how they operate, and what their advantages are. All right, we're going to look at now the physical uh, VOC concentrator, what it looks like and try to help you grasp what uh, components are what based off of that schematic uh, representation that was on our PLC touchscreen. Uh, this is about a 20,000 SCFM VOC concentrator. So probably about eight foot uh, to nine foot tall to here, uh, probably 11 foot up to the top of this burner section. And what we're looking at here uh, is the VOC concentrator itself. Uh, what we saw on that touchscreen, there's no RTO shown. Um, but I will show you the flow path that uh, that takes to get the VOCs to the RTO. Uh, we see here, this is an inlet damper. That's an actuator there. Uh, this is the expansion joint that would attach ductwork coming from whatever source we're looking to treat. If it's a paint spray booth or a semiconductor application or a fiberglass layup, airflow would come in here at the number we were using is 50,000 SCFM. Uh, this obviously is a 20,000, but uh, we'll, for um, continuity's sake, we'll say 50,000 SCFM. Comes in here, passes through. This is the filter bank. So the air comes down through the filters, gets necked down. There's a duct here that necks it down to feed uh, through the wheel. And the wheel is housed in this section. And Within this section, there's a lot going on that you can't see internally, uh, but the air passes through that wheel. As I said, about 80% of the wheel is open for uh, air to pass over it and have VOCs desor or adsorbed onto the wheel or adhered to the wheel. Uh, the clean air passes through here and would go out to an exhaust stack. So 98% of the VOCs have been removed in this airstream right here uh, that goes out to atmosphere. So somewhere in here, uh, we are doing both the cooling and the desorption in order to uh, dry the VOCs off of the wheel. Uh, they, uh, this continually operates, as I mentioned. Airflow is continually coming through here. Uh, we pull a slipstream off in here uh, that then passes uh, over the wheel. And you can't see it internally, but passes over the wheel and then uh, goes back um, through a duct past the burner here and then comes through the desorption segment of the wheel and then that air then passes through out of the wheel uh, housing into this desorption blower and this is a little t-damper you can see how small that is compared to the inlet you can see that's such a significant savings in airflow that uh, uh, all those VOCs, 98% of those VOCs that came in here are all captured in this smaller slipstream of 5,000 SCFM 
that goes out this damper. And this would go to atmosphere if we were bypassing, which typically you don't do, but it does have that capability for uh, heating the unit and all the safeties that are required. Typically it's running right to the RTO here and out um, to the inlet of the RTO for treatment. So physically that's what this, uh, this is what a VOC concentrator looks like. This is the burner segment. Uh, there's a duct that comes up into here and then comes back down into here. It's kind of hard to uh, distinguish, but that's the, the layout. This is the burner gas train for the desorption burner. This is the controls for the uh, VOC concentrator. Uh, typically it's tied in with an existing PLC uh, for the oxidizer. Our systems all are integrated uh, and talk to each other and uh, just a very good system if it's the right application. And if you think your application might be a good match for us, uh, give us a call. We'd like to see if we can help you save on fuel and electric costs uh, with the advantages of a VOC concentrator. Thanks for checking in with Conocogs.